Welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll be discussing Prescription for a Lonely Boy Who Wants Love by Long Utsumi. Before we get started, there will be spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled in this manga, go ahead and click off now. No worries, I'll catch you next time. For those of you left behind, let's go over some content warnings. There may be references to breakups, sex and intimacy in exchange for a place to stay, possibly considered sex work, perceived cheating, sex addiction, rape, slut shaming, self-deprecation, and mental illness as these things do appear in the manga. But if that's okay with you, let's go and get started. Kippei is, essentially, a professional live-in boyfriend. He doesn't necessarily love any of his partners, but they want a boyfriend to have sex with and he wants a place to live, so it works out for a time. But inevitably, his partners want more from him, and he can't give that to them. So, they break up. This time is no different, and Kipe is already on the hunt for his next partner. Thankfully, he doesn't have to go very far, as he sees a couple of guys possibly going through a breakup. Kipe is bisexual, and when he sees one of the men left behind and heartbroken, he swoops in to save the day. The man isn't necessarily his type, and Kipe even considers him to be a little plain looking, but Kipe isn't all that picky and plays the field all the same. After a surprisingly short conversation, the two end up in a hotel room where the stranger, Sosuke, turns out to be much more aggressive in bed than his appearance might suggest. After an intense romp, Kipe wakes up in the morning alone in the hotel. He laments that he didn't get Sosuke's number, but with nowhere to go and nothing else to do, Kipe makes his way to his sister's house. Once there, Kipe ends up catching a cold, and not wanting him to spread the cold to his niece, his sister demands he goes to the doctor. After much pushing, Kipe unwillingly goes. As it turns out, this was exactly what he needed. The doctor Kipe ends up seeing is none other than Sosuke. Not wanting to miss this chance, Kipe jumps at the opportunity, offering his live-in services in exchange for sex, which he punctuates by having sex with Sosuke in the doctor's office. Sosuke agrees, and Kipe quickly settles into life at his new partner's place. But Kipe soon discovers that Sosuke isn't as needy as his former partners have been. And while this usually might be a plus, when Kipe isn't needed, what good is he? To start with, there's something about this art style I don't like. It isn't terrible by any means, but there's something off-putting about it to me. I believe it might be the facial features. They're really, really wide. There are panels where from an angle, the eyes come off the character's faces, which is just an odd choice. The mouths are also exceedingly wide and seem disproportionate to the size of their faces. I'm just not the biggest fan of this style. It is very clean and consistent overall, but it's not for me. One plus about the art is that it's incredibly expressive. The more prominent facial features lend themselves really well to expressing intense emotions, which I like. Story-wise, this is one of my favorite dynamics, with a playboy being played. I love that Kipe sees Sosuke as just some plain looking guy that he can use for room and board in exchange for sex, only to fall hopelessly in love with Sosuke. Kipe is a rather dislikable guy because of the way he initially sees Sosuke, but I have to give it to him. I like that he isn't just a warm dildo. He cooks and cleans, actively tries to take Sosuke out on dates, and even initiates non-sexual intimacy. I have to admit, I'd be pretty tempted by Kipe, thanks to all of that. Most playboys being played we see are just there for sex and not much else, but Kipe strives to be a worthwhile partner, perhaps not emotionally, but in most other categories, which I really appreciate. However, his need to be needed by his partners leads to Sosuke having all the power in their relationship. For Kipe, most of his partners need him because they don't have the time or energy to find someone who actually loves them. Furthermore, they need someone to take care of the house so they can fund his lifestyle. Unlike his other partners, Sosuke doesn't need Kipe in any way. The sex is convenient, but he easily goes out and finds other partners when he's denied sex. He doesn't need someone to cook or clean for him as he's naturally neat and active. And he has no desire for non-sexual intimacy, so that ends up being more of a detriment to their relationship than a bonus. Unfortunately, this does lead to Kipe doing extremely cruel things to Sosuke due to his own insecurities in their tenuous partnership, but this also leads to him developing feelings for Sosuke. Is it because that's all he had left to give? Is it because he genuinely fell for him? Who knows? But I love that shift. Sosuke can live without Kipe, but chooses to let Kipe in anyway. Something that I've never seen explicitly discussed in manga, or really any other BL medium, is sex addiction. If it did mention it, it wasn't important enough in the story for me to remember it. I was pretty pumped to find out this was the main narrative point in this title, especially since it's pretty well explored. Seeing Sosuke struggle to balance a monogamous relationship with his addiction is heartbreaking. And it was refreshing that this addiction began pretty subtly with no 
terrible trauma or violent history associated with it. He had sex with his friend in their youth and discovered he was gay as a result, but no matter how many times he had sex with someone else, he just couldn't find peace with his unrequited love. I am no expert on addiction in any form, but this seems like a pretty realistic depiction. I also like that Kipe decides to be with Sosuke anyway, willing to help him overcome his addiction. Unfortunately, it's all wrapped up very quickly, with Sosuke suddenly deciding not to have sex one night and that implying he's quote, cured. The addiction was so well crafted and explored, so to just have it magically cured through Kipe's love, though as romantic as that is, is super disappointing all the same. I know part of this is because it's so short at around a single volume's length, but it needed so much more time to allow Sosuke to grow independently. There's a brief time skip of approximately six months when this occurs. In that time, we learn that Kipe finally has a job, which would have been nice to see more of. And while I'm sure brief stints of no sex are probably common while recovering from sex addiction, it just feels so quick and out of nowhere following a random time skip. I would have liked it better if he'd been shown to be working on it rather than just being cured, as it would have been much more realistic. I keep picturing a sweet scene of Sosuke coming home to a home cooked meal after therapy or something. Just happy to be at the table with Kipe and learning how to cope. But that's just fanfic for me at this point. <laughs> With all that being said, this had me in the first half. Well, a bit more than the first half, but it lost me in the end. The rape scene was unfortunate and didn't make much sense to me narratively, this coming from someone who typically likes non-con, and the sudden I'm cured aspect of the sex addiction left me feeling icky. I think this has a ton of potential, but it needed so much more time or at least a better ending for it to be a favorite. I'm happy I read it as it was pretty refreshing overall, but I don't picture myself rereading this all that often. So, have you read Prescription for a Lonely Boy Who Wants Love? If so, what do you think? Do you agree with my assessment? Do you not? Let me know in comment below. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time. Bye!